Hello again and welcome back to our course on Windows 10. Much earlier on in the course I mentioned that you can have multiple accounts on your device and it may well be that early on you need to set up one or more other accounts, perhaps for other members of your family. So I'm going to cover in this section the basics of managing user accounts. First of all I'm going to review some basic account settings. I'll then show you how to change account type from a local account to a Microsoft account or vice versa. We'll then talk about creating new accounts and finally I'll show you how to delete user accounts from your Windows 10 device. Let's get started. Referring to the list of users at the bottom left of this screen you can see that there are three users of this device and each of them has some differences in their setup. What I'm going to look at in this section the very basic features of the setup of each of these users. So first of all I'm going to log in in the normal way and I'm going to have a look at my own setup and settings first. Having logged in as me in the usual way to see my settings I'm going to click on start and I'm going to go up to settings. So click on settings I get the Windows settings home screen and one of the options there is accounts. By default I see my own settings and you'll see there that I have a local account and I am an administrator. As an administrator I can do a lot to manage this device. I can do things like create other users and even delete other users from the device. So generally speaking you don't give the administrator privilege as it's called to all users of a device. A more very straightforward way of making sure that somebody doesn't do too much damage on your PC is to not let them be an administrator. Now notice just under there that it says sign in with a Microsoft account instead. If I wanted to switch to a Microsoft account that's what I'd click to do it and at the bottom of the screen are a list of options for getting a suitable picture so I can use the camera, I can browse or I could use one of the existing apps on the device camera or gallery and their libraries of photos to access a picture that I can use as an account picture. Now bear in mind that we're still looking at my details if I look at email and app accounts you'll see the accounts that I use on this device and I don't actually use any on this device. Now that's quite an unusual situation for most users. The reason it's that way for me is because I use this device purely for demonstration and teaching purposes and I don't use it for day-to-day -day correspondence and communication. So I'm certainly not going to put my real emails, calendar and contacts on this device. If I wanted to access a system at work or at school I could use this option and if I go right to the bottom option now sync your settings if I were using a Microsoft account I could decide here whether I wanted to sync the settings with other devices on which I'm logged in with that Microsoft account so for instance I could sync the theme I was using my Internet Explorer settings passwords language preferences ease of access settings and other Windows settings as I mentioned much earlier on in the course, one of the advantages of using a Microsoft account is that you can sync those settings between multiple devices to which you're logged in using that Microsoft account. The last option that I want to show you is this one, Family and Other People. And this lists the other people that are able to use this device. Note that in this case all of mine are linked under other people I don't have other family members using this device for fairly obvious security reasons if I wanted to see my family here I would sign in with a Microsoft account to do that now the two other people that are set up on this device are the two people whose names you saw on the login screen Toby A and Sally Toby A actually has a Microsoft account and Sally has a local account and what I'm going to show you in just a moment is what's involved in changing from a local account to a Microsoft account and vice versa. 
First of all, I should point out that the only reason that I can see and manage these other accounts is because I'm an administrator on this device. If I were a standard user on this device, then I wouldn't be able to change settings for other users. Now there's one other page of settings, very important page, sign-in options. And these are the sign-in options for me. Starting at the top, if you've been away, when should Windows require you to sign in again? So let's suppose you're using the device at work and you go away for a little while, perhaps go to a meeting, you don't actually log out, you leave your device on. After a certain amount of time, depending on the settings, the device may go to sleep. If it's gone to sleep, do you need to enter your password again in order to get it out of sleep? You've got two options here. If you've been away, when should Windows require you to sign in again? When PC wakes up from sleep or never? If you choose the never option, that means that if you've been away, and the screen saver, power saver setting on the device has effectively put the machine to sleep. All you'll have to do is, for example, to move the mouse to wake it up again. You won't have to enter your password again. There are then a number of options for sign in. The one I've been using so far is the second one, the password option. And this is the button, the change button here, that lets you change your account password. One of the options that's available now on some devices is Windows Hello. And this it uses some kind of biometric or associated method of letting you log in. So it may have fingerprint recognition, facial recognition, etc. If that's available on your device, it will tell you here. And you'll be able to find out, for instance, a device that you could plug into your PC that would enable you to do that. So there's a link there. See how it works and find compatible devices. The other two options are PIN and Picture Password. So you can log in with a PIN instead, or you can use a Picture Password. I'll demonstrate both of those to you later on on the course. Now it's time to show you what's involved in changing an account from being a local account to a Microsoft account or vice versa. So what I'm going to do first is to switch user. I'm going to log in as Toby A, the other Toby A, the one with the Microsoft account, and show you a couple of things that are different and also how Toby would switch back to a local account again. I'm now logged in as the other Toby A and a couple of things to point out here. One of them is that you can see on the taskbar here, one of the icons corresponds to the Microsoft Store. As I'm now logged in with a Microsoft account, that gives me access to the apps available via the Microsoft Store. More on that later. And if I click on the Start button here, you'll see that Toby A has a very different list of, for example, most used apps. And the arrangement of the tiles there is completely different from the arrangement of the tiles from the account we've been using so far. So let's let Toby A go into his settings. There he is. One of the most notable things here is that Toby is not an administrator. He's what's called a standard user. And therefore he can't see settings for other people. He can, however, see his own settings. So email and app accounts. There is Toby's Microsoft account, toby.a.live.co.uk. That is a dummy account, by the way. So any email received on that account is deleted automatically. And one of the other points of note here, if I look at the sign in options, is that Toby actually signs in with a pin. And you can see here the option to change or remove his pin. And if I click on sync your settings, you can see that Toby's settings are all synced based on his Microsoft account apart from passwords. So let's go back to his main settings here. Now the one or two important settings here, one of them is manage my Microsoft account which lets Toby log in to Microsoft to manage his Microsoft account in the usual way. Also if you're using a Microsoft account on a Windows 10 PC you will have to go through a verification process. So if it says verify here, as it does in this case, it will be necessary to go through and verify that identity on this device. 
But if he wants to switch to using a local account, he would say sign in with a local account instead. So first of all, he needs to verify that he really is who he says he is by putting in the password to his Microsoft account. And now what happens is Toby has the opportunity to set up his local account. A username is suggested. Bear in mind that there's already a local account, Toby A, the one that I use normally. So the suggestion here is Toby A2. So let's stick with that suggested username. Let's put in a password. Password hint. That's a sort of coded hint for me. Click on Next. So once he's signed out and finished, he will be logging in next time with his local account. I'm going to click on sign out and finish, and then I'm going to log back in as the new identity of the second Toby A. And then we're going to switch him back to using his Microsoft account again. So I've now logged back in using the local account. Let's go into settings. So, Toby A2, local account, sign in with a Microsoft account instead. Click on that link. So, all I need to do now is to put in the details of Toby's Microsoft account, the username and the password. If you want to switch somebody from a local account to a Microsoft account and they don't have a Microsoft account yet, there is an option here to create one. So, let me just put Toby's details in and click on sign in. Enter the current Windows password. Now depending on your device and whether it's capable of using Windows Hello you can use that or enter PIN. Put Toby's PIN in. And there we are. Toby is back to having a Microsoft account again. So I've just got a couple of other things to show you now. I'm going to log back in as myself and I'm going to show you two other things. One of them is how to create a new user and one of them is how to remove a user. So I'm logged back in as me. I'm an administrator so I can add users to this device. Go to family and other people. I'm going to say add someone else to this PC. I have a number of options when I do this. One of the options is to specify the person's email address or phone number. Now the email address may be a Microsoft account email address. It might be some other email address. On this occasion what I'm going to do is to assume a worst case scenario and say I don't have this person's sign in information. I'm going to add a user called John D, but I don't even know what his email address is. He's somebody who's going to use this PC. I want John to be able to set up all of his own information. I'm going to set him up with a local account, not a Microsoft account, and all I'm going to do is make him a user. If in fact what you want to do is set somebody up and you know their Microsoft account or you know their other email address or phone number, then obviously you'd fill in the appropriate boxes in this sequence. So on this occasion, I'm going to click on I don't have this person's sign-in information. So I might take the approach, well, I'll set up an email address for this user, John D. So what effect I'm saying here is I'm going to get John down the road of setting up a Microsoft account. And John will then be able to use his Microsoft account when he's using this PC. But on this occasion, I'm going to say add a user without a Microsoft account. In this situation, then all I'm going to do is put in John's username. I'm going to just put in the username John D. I'm going to enter a password. And once the account's set up, I'll tell John what his username and password are. He'll be able to log in and set up whatever other information he wants to set up. So click on Next. And John D is now set up with a local account. Now in the next section, I'm going to set you an exercise and you're actually going to complete that process of setting up a new user with a local account and then you'll be able to go through the process of first logging in and then setting up any other information that you want to set up. That just leaves us with one thing to look at. In fact, there are two things to look at. Let's first of all look at the question of removing an account. If I click on Sally at the bottom here, two important options. 
One of the options is remove and if I want to remove Sally's account I just click on remove. Note the warning there, deleting this person's account will remove all their data from this PC. On this occasion I'm going to cancel. The other thing that I can do is to change the account type. Now this account type refers to the difference between a standard account and an administrator account. Sally, like all of the users except me, is a standard user. If I wanted to make Sally into an administrator, I'd select administrator there, click on OK, and Sally would become an administrator of this PC. That's it. We've covered the basics of user accounts in Windows 10. That's the end of this section. The next one is exercise one. I'll see you then. Hey everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. Just click on the subscribe button to get notified when new videos are added to our channel. And if you liked the video, feel free to like and comment below. I'll see you next week with additional videos.